about a week and a half, two weeks ago, I did a video on the iSonic Ultrasonic Cleaner. I was impressed with how nicely it worked. It had a good capacity with 10 albums. I've just about gone through three quarters of my collection cleaning everything. I've been stunned at all the crap that comes out of the uh, records and seeing the globs of filth on the bottom of the tank. Uh, I'm sure some was in suspension. I was pretty much doing more than one load of records with a tank full of water and didn't like the way all the dirt was accumulating. I started looking into filters and online I'm seeing guys doing all sorts of reverse osmosis and pumps to put the water back in and I'm saying this is nuts. There's got to be a simple way to filter this stuff to at least get the particles out and I did that project today and we'll go through it. The uh, cost of the project was roughly oh, just under 50 bucks. Got a two gallon bucket which gives me enough room for the tank to fill without going up to the surface. It's got a top. I got a shower water filter that, you know, I drill the hole, put it in, have a connector on the other side so it stays in place and then added a connector tube and nipples so the polyethylene tube that connects to the iSonic uh, can dump the water out for me. It took about 15 minutes actually to put together. Everything went smoothly for a change. Uh, no surprises. That was nice. The Actually the only unexpected thing, uh, when I, the first load I ran I snapped the lid tight so things were pretty tight and I really didn't have to do that uh, because it's not going to come up to the top anyway. But I ended up drilling a hole in the top to relieve pressure so that the water could freely flow from the tank and release any air pressure that builds up in the tank. Uh, the uh, uh, results I think were pretty nice. The water drained into the tank. The filter seemed to do its job. It, uh, uh, you know, I wiped down the tank, put the water back in, and the water looked relatively clean, which you'll also get to see in a bit. Uh, other discoveries I've had is I will no longer use microfiber rags to dry the records. I have a number of records that had me very upset because my stylus was picking up white fibers and playing clean records and said how did this happen it didn't make any sense to me and doing a little research online it seems to be related to microfiber rags some of the records that i've air dried no problem stylus is clean and frankly the records sound like i've never heard them before uh very nice sounding uh reproduction coming off them now. Most of the hiss and surface noise is gone. Obviously if there's a scratch you can't do anything about that, but very nice. So now instead of using microfiber towels, if I need to do a little drying, I'm using lint-free wipes like the Kimmy wipes that came with it. You know, I may switch to brands when I need more, but at least that doesn't leave any fibers in the grooves and does the job. So that's been my experience so far. Very impressed with it. A lot of crap coming off of the records. Uh, some of them I'm going to have to redo. Uh, actually, I'm probably going to have to redo a good number of them. The problem is going to be trying to figure out which ones, uh, since I don't remember which ones I wiped down with the microfibers and which air dried. But we'll figure it out. In the meantime, if you're on the fence, you will not regret an ultrasonic cleaner. It is a different world, different music, and it's nice. This is before we use the filter. This is what prompted me to try and figure out how to make a filter for this. If you look in the bottom of the tank, you can see uh, the little spots of debris in there. 
the uh, strings of debris uh, that coat the bottom of the tank. It was not pretty, and it dawned on me that I probably didn't want to keep running more records through after each load. So wanted to filter it for each new load. So I ended up going to Home Depot and checking out filters, looking for something that could be used in line in a tank. Okay, I picked up a two gallon bucket with a lid, wanted something to install in the lid. The thing that looked like it might work the best was this Sprite shower filter. In normal use, it goes between the wall nipple and the shower head. And that's virtually the way I wanted to hook things up here. So I decided to give that a try. It cost about 20 bucks. It has a replaceable cartridge. If I don't like the way this works, I could probably just remove the cartridge and put in some aquarium filter material, something like that, or a fine sponge. Uh, we'll see how it works. Right now, this was the way we decided to go. To hold the filter in place, I got this PVC connector. It has internal threads on both ends. And another option this gives me is I want to change to a, adding a filter inside the tank uh, or inside the bucket. I have the threaded PVC uh, now inside the bucket as well. So it gives me that option as well. So this clamps it down to the uh, top of the bucket. Here's a shot of the underside of the lid. The connector is holding the filter in place. And from the top or outside of the lid, here we have the housing for the filter sitting on top of the bucket. I drilled a three quarter inch hole and the connector screwed in very snugly. This is the filter element that goes in the housing. It's relatively compact, it's replaceable. Uh, they say in the shower it's supposed to last six months, so this could probably last a lifetime in this type of application. And it appears to offer both mechanical as well as chemical type filtration, you know, since it's got the carbon and uh, the other elements in it. And here's the fully assembled filter in place. The nipple coming out of the filter with the coupler so that the hose can attach to it. And in retrospect, in rethinking what we've done here, I probably could have gotten by with just the nipple and not needed the coupler since they're both half inch. Okay, we're gonna dump the water now. We got our bucket over here. We've got the filter on it. The top is loose, but I'm not too worried about that because the water's not gonna come up to the top. Okay, we simply plug our hose on. We have our valve over here, open it up and let it drain. Now I did punch a hole in the top to relieve pressure and that did seem to speed up the flow of water. But now it can drain out, the filthy water gets filtered, I wipe out the tank and then I can start again. Of course tomorrow I'll be starting with fresh water. So not too bad. It seems I had a little leak over here earlier, but I used a little silicone seal, 
on the fitting there. It did not come with a washer and I didn't have one the proper size. So I just used some silicone and that seems to be keeping it dry. The only leak we seem to have is right at the tank, right here, which was very slow and not a big deal. It's draining fast. The filter is taking it very quickly. If I decide I don't like the way this is going, there are other inline filters that I may try. Or since all I have to do is unscrew the top, I can take the filter element out there and possibly use something like, uh, you know, the filter floss you would use in a fish tank, which might also be fine enough to get these particles squared away. So. This hopefully will keep some of the crap off from getting back on the records. Now I did also experience a uh, couple records that I dried with microfiber cloths. Some of them I air dried. The ones with the microfiber cloths uh, looks like I had residue in the grooves from the cloths. And I discovered that by doing a little research. Uh, I guess micro Microfiber cloths are not as lint-free as we might like to think they are. Uh, they're polyester, and I guess they were doing some shedding, and what I found come off in the records was terrible. I mean, it was just clogging up on the needle. However, the records that were air-dried, they sound clear, clean, cleaner than I ever recall the records sounding, and absolutely no residue on the needle. So there's an idea. You know, I've heard people spending uh, all sorts of money for fancy filter systems, you know, and reverse osmosis systems, and then having a pump put it back in the tank. And, you know, I just wanted to get rid of these fibers and this crap and uh, have a somewhat cleaner water. I didn't feel like getting that nuts. So it seems to work. And right now I'm happy. We'll see if this continues to work as nicely as it does. Here's the tank of clean filtered water that I started with. If you recall, I did run a batch before doing the video. So this is what we started with. The tank was wiped down, the water was filtered, and it appears to have cleaned up nicely in the bucket. The previous shot showed the relatively clean water that we had uh, after filtration and upon finishing the last set of records, this is what the tank looked like. You can see the splotches all over the bottom. This batch of records had a couple seven inch records in there. Half the batch was new, half the batch was old, so it may not have been bad as a full batch of old records, but you can see those little dots there. That's all crap that came out of the records. There you have it. I took an online shower filter, put it into a bucket, and it appears to work for filtering the water from the ultrasonic cleaner. Uh, makes life a little easier. Uh, I can use cleaner water with the records now. And frankly, it also makes it neater because I was using a smaller bucket and I had to make a couple trips. So nice, simple uh, project to try. It took about 15 minutes to put the whole thing together. It took longer to find the parts at Home Depot than it took to put it together. So good luck. If you think of ultrasonics, by all means, it did make a big difference in sound as far as I'm concerned.